So far in this Markup to ModX series, we've talked about templates, chunks, and snippets. These are various types of ModX elements, and you can use them to produce almost any result you desire, but ModX doesn't stop there. From the earliest releases of ModX, an integral part of its infinitely flexible templating system has been the template variable, or TV for short. Don't let the name scare you. Template variables are simply custom fields. Fields for what, you may ask? Well, the heart of every ModX site is not the elements that we've been talking about. It's the resources. Resources are the content part of content management. Without content, there'd be nothing to manage. By default, there are six text fields that can be used to assign content to a resource. Page title, long title, description, intro text, menu title, and the content field itself. But what about the content that isn't text-based? And what if you want to structure your content in ways that are unique to each resource? And how do you provide an easy way for site owners and authors to upload arbitrary content, yet still maintain control over the presentation of that content? ModX TVs solve all of these problems and bridge the gap between web developer and content editor. Let's dive into creating template variables in our demo site. And if the subject isn't 100% clear to you right now, it will be by the end of this tutorial. In our demo site, I've set up a fourth category for this lesson, and we're going to work on the interior template. Let's preview the About page, which uses this template. We want to add a little visual impact with a feature image, so we'll add an image element here using, for now, an image from placekitten.com as the source. Now when we view the About page, we have our kitten image. But if we view this other resource that also uses the same template, we see that it has the same image. This is where TVs come in handy. We'll replace the entire image element with two open square brackets, an asterisk, which is the token for TVs, the name of the TV, let's call ours image, then two closing square brackets. Note the asterisk is also the token for default resource fields, like the content field, shown here. We'll save our template, and now when we view the About page, the image is gone. That's because we've called the image TV, which doesn't exist in our site yet. Under the Elements tab, right-click on the Template Variables item and select New Template Variable, or click on the New TV icon. The name of the TV is required and should match the name we use to call the TV into the template markup. In this case, Image. We can optionally add a caption so people know what the TV is for when they go to enter value into it. We'll assign a category. And we'll skip the Properties tab for now and go straight to Input Options. The default input type is text, but we're going to select Image from the list of available input types. For the default value, we're going to enter the URL of our placeholder kitten image. Then under the Output Options tab, we'll select Image as the output type. Finally, under Template Access, we'll enable the checkbox for our interior template and save the TV. Now when we view our About page, we have our Place Kitten image again. But when we view this other resource, it still displays the exact same image. Well, that seems like a lot of work for nothing, doesn't it? Behind the scenes, we've actually accomplished a lot, however. Right now, the Image TV outputs the default value that we assign to it when we set it up. It also processes that value according to our output options and wraps it in an image element. We can see this if we view the source of the page. However, let's see what happens when we go to edit the About Pages resource. Under the Resources tab, we'll click on the About resource, and now there is a new Template Variables tab. Under that tab is where our TVs will render for user interaction, and we can see our new custom TV is available here as a file picker element. That's because we chose Image under the Input options when we created the TV. It even attempts to display a thumbnail of the image. However, in this environment, off-server thumbnailing is not allowed. Let's click on the drop-down arrows to pick an image from the file system. We'll navigate to our Assets Images folder and select one of the images on the server. Then we'll click OK. We can also upload a new image, but we'll go through that process a bit later. Remember to save the resource. And now when we view it, we see our image selection displayed instead of the default. The other resource still shows the default because no custom value has been entered. Let's fix that now. 
We'll edit the child resource and we'll click on the Image TV's drop down arrows to invoke the Modix file browser again. This time, instead of selecting one of the images already in the Images Assets folder, we're going to click the Upload Files icon or right click on the desired folder location and choose Upload Files. The Upload Files modal window is a queue. You must add files to the queue one by one using the Add button. Select the file you wish to upload from your computer and click Open. You'll see the file listed in the queue. Click the Upload button to start the upload process. When it's completed, you'll see OK in the notes here. When you're done uploading all your files, click Close. Then select the image you want to use, click OK, and the image's path will be populated into the TV and the thumbnail will be displayed. Remember to save the resource, and now when we view it, the newly uploaded image is displayed, whereas on our About page, the previously selected image is displayed. If we remove the value of the TV on the About page and save the resource, we can see in the source view of the page that nothing is output, not even the image element. Now we have resource-specific content that is easily editable, with a variety of powerful options to control the input and output of that content. We've only scratched the surface in this tutorial. Out of the box, there are 13 different input types, including checkboxes, rich text, single and multi-select elements, and much more. There are multiple output types, as well as extras that can be installed to extend the functionality of TVs. The possibilities are literally endless. In our next tutorial, we'll show you how to combine TVs with the other Modex elements we've talked about for even more power and flexibility.